Well, welcome back. Our topic today is double angles. So there's two words we want to break down, the word double and the word angle. If I asked you to double the amount of money you get paid per hour um, at your job, what would you do to that amount? Let's say you made $10 an hour, and I said, okay, I'm going to double that amount. What am I actually doing when I say double? Hopefully you're thinking you want to multiply by 2. And that's what the word double should mean to you. So let's make a note. When we say double, we are implying to multiply by 2. Now, you're not going to just multiply anything by 2. It's called a double angle. So the key is, is that we want to double our angle. So when I say the sine of x, okay, we should know by now from our trig experience that this x here represents the angle. So if I were to say I want to double that angle, I would rewrite it as the sine of, multiply it by 2, x. So notice I'm taking that angle x and doubling it. I'm multiplying it by 2. And this is what we need to recognize as a double angle. Now you're going to want to pause this and copy these formulas down. I just want to make a note that these formulas are given to us on our exam. You do not have to memorize them. However, you'll use them enough times that you might start to memorize them, but you don't have to memorize them. So again, these are given on our exam. And you notice there's a whole bunch of double angle formulas, so let's just pause for a moment and take a look at them. And again, I know it's a double angle because I'm taking angle A and I'm multiplying it by 2. Double angle for sine. And you'll notice that I only have one of those. However, the double angle for cosines, there I am multiplying my angle by 2. Notice, I've got three different ones to choose from. And that's going to be a big deal. We're going to want to pick the smartest one, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then my double angle for tangent, I only have one option, but it does kind of look the ugliest, I would say. All right, so what will a question look like that's implying a double angle? Here we go. It says, find the exact value, okay, and let's make a note here, so copy that in your book. When we say exact value, we mean no calculator, okay, so put that aside. We want the exact value of the sine of 2x, cosine of 2x, and tangent of 2x. Now again, how do you know it's a double angle? Well, you're taking angle x there and you're multiplying it by 2. Okay, so that's the big hint that it's a double angle. So let's start with the sine of 2x. And the first thing I'm going to do is copy down the formula. So I'm just going to go over sine of 2x. I actually only have one option. And you notice they're using a's. My problem uses x's, so I'm just going to switch those a's to x's. So I'm going to say that's 2 sine x cos x. Okay, now for each of these, we're going to draw a picture to find our missing pieces. So, they're going to be very specific about where your triangle's sitting. So let's go ahead and label our four degrees here. And I don't actually want to use degrees. I know we know this is 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, but let's put it in radians. So 0, this is 90 degrees, which is pi divided by 2. This is our pi, 3 pi over 2, and back to 2 pi. And they will be very specific on where you're sitting. You are sitting between pi and 3 pi over 2. So that puts me, pi to 3 pi over 2 puts me in the third quadrant. So go ahead and remember, we want it to look like a bow tie. It should be sitting on the x-axis. Theta is always at the origin, and your right angle is on the x-axis. Now, think back to your basic trig functions. So katoa. Okay. We have sine, so I have the opposite over the hypotenuse. So I'm going to label my opposite 4, my hypotenuse 5. Now, notice one of them has to be negative. And again, this is just common sense now. If you take this value and you go to the left, would you assign a positive or negative value if you go to the left? Hopefully you're saying negative. And if you go down, that's certainly a negative value. Your hypotenuse has to be positive. So I want to make it very clear that that's the negative 4. All right, so a quick Pythagorean theorem to get your missing side. Um, keep in mind, just a little quick review here, that c squared has to be the hypotenuse. So my hypotenuse is 5 squared. And if you know this one as a triple, that's even better. Um, hopefully you've recognized, and again, I'll go through it one last time. a squared equals 9, so I've got a equals 3. 3, 4, 5 is a per, uh, Pythagorean identity. Pythagorean triple, I'm sorry. Now, notice you are taking from the origin, and you're moving to the left 
So even though you got 3 as an answer, you've got to be smart enough to say, because I'm moving to the left, I need to slap a negative 3 on there. Now at this point, we just kind of plug and chug. So all I'm going to do is evaluate these in my formula, and I'm going to shoot it down this way here. So I'm going to say it's 2. The sine of my angle was actually given. That's negative 4 fifths. And I need the cosine of my angle. And that's why I needed this picture. So I've got to say cosine is from ka is adjacent over hypotenuse. So negative 3 over 5. Now remember, they said exact value, which meant no calculator. So I need to do this without that. So I'm going to make this to a fraction by putting it over 1. And multiplying fractions is very, very simple. You just multiply across the top. Uh, so 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 8 times negative 3 makes a positive 24. Multiply across the bottom, and I get 25. Final answer. All right. Well, not only did they want us to find the sine of 2x, we're also going to find the cosine of 2x. Now, the nice part about this is I don't need to redraw the picture. I have all the work in front of me. I just need to pick the smartest formula. So I'm going to say the cosine of 2x equals, and I'm just going to go to my chart. And this one makes me think a little bit because I actually have three options to choose from. Now, I keep saying that pick the smartest one, the smartest one. All right, so here's how you pick the smartest choice. You look at what's given to you. You know the sine of x. So if you look at all three of these, I think the smartest choice is the one that only deals with sine. This one deals with both. I almost never pick that if I don't have to. This one only deals with sine, and this one only deals with cosine. And since I already know sine, I'm going to pick the one that only has sine in it. So I'm going to say this is 1 minus 2 sine squared a. 1 minus 2 sine squared a. And again, I'm going to use x in this case. All right, so again, it's just plug and chug. 1 minus 2 in place of sine x, I'm going to put that negative 4 fifths that was given. Now just don't miss the squared. We have to slap a squared symbol on there. Now remember, they said exact value. So that means I cannot use my calculator. So let's be smart about this. Order of operations, say parentheses, exponents. So I'm going to start there. So I'm going to leave this as 1 minus 2. I'm going to use my parentheses, negative 4 fifths, and square it. And remember, when you square it, you just square the top and you square the bottom. So 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and when you square a negative, you certainly get a positive. I'm going to keep cleaning it up because it said exact value. 1 minus, I'm going to make this to a fraction by putting it over 1. 16 over 25. Okay, so again, I'm just going to multiply across the top. So it's 32 over 25. Now, you still might be dying to grab your calculator, but we're doing it without a calculator. My goal is to get a common denominator, and this is actually very simple. If I want the denominator of 25, I'm going to rewrite 1 by saying 1 is actually 25 divided by 25. So take a minute and think about that. Would you agree with that? Any number divided by itself is 1, and since I want a denominator of 25, I'm going to call this one 25 over 25. Minus 32 over 25 gets me a negative 7 over 25. And we've got it. All right, well, we have one last piece to this question. Um, there was a third part, and that question said, find the exact value of the tangent of 2x. So I'm just going to scroll back up to my formulas there and take note that tangents, it looks ugly, um, but we'll make deal do with it. There's only one option, though, so I'm just going to recopy this down. So 2 tan x over 1 minus tan squared x. Okay. Now you'll notice, remember, I wasn't given tangent, but I don't have another option. I have to go with this. So I'm going to go back and use my picture. And this picture that we drew, and we want to find tangent. Now remember, tangent is over a, so katoa. So if I look at my picture, the opposite is negative 4, the adjacent is negative 3. And of course, those two negatives make a positive. So I'm going to say tangent is 4 thirds. So again, I'm just going to make a note to myself, I know the tangent of x is 4 thirds. So I can say the double angle for tangent is 2 times 4 thirds all over 1 minus, in place of tangent of x, I'm putting 4 thirds and squaring it. All right, so I know you're dying for that calculator. We're going to avoid it because it's that exact value. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn this 2 into a fraction by putting it over 1. So on top, I actually get 8 thirds all over 1 minus 
Remember, square the top, square the bottom. 16 ninths. All right, so these just take steps in cleaning it up. I'm going to keep cleaning it up and say I really have 8 thirds over. Now remember, if I want to add these two together, I need to get a common denominator. So I can replace 9, I'm sorry, replace the number 1 by saying it's really 9 over 9. Again, do you agree 9 divided by 9 is 1? And I'm doing that because I need a common denominator. So I have 8 thirds divided by negative 7 ninths. And now this should just look like a nice complex fraction. Maybe I shouldn't say nice, but a complex fraction nonetheless. And if I look at my two denominators, what's the common denominator between the numbers 3 and 9? Hopefully you're saying the number 9. So I'm going to multiply both numerators by 9. And 3 goes into 9 3 times. So 8 times 3 gets me 24. And the 9's cancel, and I get divided by negative 7. And there you have it. Double angle for tangent. All right, second question. Now, we did just previously answer three questions and one there. So question two, find the exact values. Again, exact value, so no calculator. That's what that's telling me. Of sine of 2x, cosine of 2x, and tangent of 2x using the double angle formulas, and we're given the tangent of x equals negative 1 half. All right, so let's start by drawing her out and figuring what quadrant we're sitting in. So I go 0, 90 is pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and back to 2 pi. Okay, they're telling me that you're going to sit between pi over 2 and pi. So hopefully you see that's in the second quadrant. Again, your bow tie triangle, make it look like a piece of a bow tie. Theta should be at the origin, and your 90 degree angle is always on the x-axis. Um, based off Sokotoa, so remember your Sokotoa, make sure you can spell that out. It's kind of our ninth grade trig. We know tangent is opposite over adjacent. So my opposite side is 1, my adjacent side is 2. Now remember, one of them has to be negative because it says negative 1 half. Which one looks negative to you? The one that moves to the left of the origin or the one that moves up? And I'm hoping common sense is telling you it's the one that moves to the left. Up should be a positive value. All right, so we'll real quickly get that other side, Pythagorean theorem. Remember, c squared has to be the hypotenuse across from the right angle. So I've got 1 squared plus negative 2 squared equals c squared. That's 1 plus 4 equals c squared. Uh, 5 equals c squared. So c equals the square root of 5. And keep in mind the hypotenuse is always positive. All right, let's run through our questions. The first one, we want to find the sine of 2x. And again, catch that it's a double angle. We're going to change this on you. You might have half angles coming up, um, but pay attention. You're taking that angle x, and you're multiplying it by 2. So I go to my chart. The only option for sine of 2x is right there. So that's 2. And again, I'm going to use x's instead of a's. doesn't matter the letter. And I'm just going to take my time and plug these in. So looking at my picture, sine should be opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, so opposite is 1 over radical 5. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So negative 2 over radical 5. And again, I'm going to make that 2 a fraction by putting it over 1. Now don't worry about rationalizing the denominator until the very end. So again, no calculator because uh, it says exact value. So the tops get me negative 4. And the bottoms get me actually radical 5 times radical 5 is really the square root of 25, which just turns into the number 5. So I've got negative 4 fifths. All right, let's try the cosine of 2x. Okay, so again, I'm doubling the angle. I'm multiplying the angle by 2. All right, so let's talk about which of these three is the smartest one to pick. Now, I'm going to look at what's given. I'm given tangent. Is tangent in any of these? Well, hopefully you're saying no. I clearly don't see tangent. So I guess what I'm trying to say is because tangent's not in any of them, you can pick whichever one you want. Now, my personal preference, you know, I'm probably going to pick one where there's only one term. But if you like that first one, go for it. Um, I'm going to go with the second one. So 1 minus 2 sine squared. 
Any one I pick, I should get the same answer in the end. If you want to be brave and try another one, that's awesome. So I'm going to carefully plug these in. 1 minus 2. Looking at my picture, the sign, again, opposite over hypotenuse, should be 1 over radical 5. And don't forget that it's sine squared, so I have to square that bear. If I keep going, I've got 1 minus 2. Remember, order of operations, square first. 1 squared is 1. When you square a square root, they cancel, so I should get 1 fifth. Okay, I'm going to put that 2 over 1. So I've got 1 minus 2 fifths. All right, see if you can get that on your own now. What would you want to call 1 so that you have a denominator of 5? What over 5 is 5? Is 1. Hopefully you're saying 5 fifths. So you should get an answer of 3 fifths. All right, well, last piece. We just need to find the tangent of 2 theta, or 2x. So I believe there's only one option for tangent if we scroll back up, and that is correct, and that's this option, 2 tan x over 1 minus tan squared. Now remember, we were actually given tangent in the beginning. Tangent of x is negative 1 half. So that's going to come in real handy. I don't even need to relook at the chart. I know when I see tangent of x, I can put in place of it negative 1 half. 1 minus negative 1 half squared. All right, and again, just going to quickly go through with my algebra. I'm going to say this is really 2 over 1. So on top, I get negative 2 over 2, which of course is just negative 1. And so let me fix that. That's a negative 1. All over on the bottom, that's 1 minus. Uh, when I square 1 over 2, I get 1 over 4. And this negative squared, of course, turns into a positive. And I'm going to clean this up by saying 1 is actually 4 fourths. And if I subtract those, 4 fourths minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. So I'm still looking at a complex fraction. We've talked about those earlier in the year. Um, I can easily kill the fraction by multiplying by 4. Another thing you could do, if you don't like that, you could always change division to multiplication and flip your fraction. So I could really say it's negative 1 flip division and multiplication, but then just forget, remember that you have to flip that fraction, so times 4 thirds. So I've got negative 4 thirds. Okay, well I promise this is the last one of the night. Um, we're given that x is an acute angle and the sine of x is 12 over 13. Then what's the cosine of 2x? Well, think about this. If you're an acute angle, what does that mean? Remember from your geometry days, acute means that you are less than 90 degrees. So if you've got to draw this out, what quadrant are you sitting in if you're less than 90 degrees? Well, remember if that's 0 and that's pi over 2, 90, clearly I think you should be in quadrant 1. So I can label that my Sokotoa opposite over hypotenuse 12, 13. And again, I would just do Pythagorean theorem to get that side. If you know your triples, that of course is a 5, 5, 12, 13. Okay, now, cosine of 2x, that's kind of the annoying one because you've got three options. And again, let's just talk about the best option one more time. What are you given? I'm given something about sine. So if I look at these options, I'm going to pick the one that only involves sine. So I'm going with that second option of cosine of 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So I can say 1 minus 2. I know the sine of x is 12 over 13, and remember you have to square it. One more rundown of my order of operations. 1 minus 2 times 12 squared is 144, 13 squared, 169. Um, I'm going to make that 2 a fraction by putting it over 1. So I've got uh, 288 over 169. And of course, I want to rewrite my 1 with a denominator of 169, so I'm going to say that's 169 over 169, because any number divided by itself is 1. And when I subtract my numerators, I get negative 119 over 169. And there you have it, our double angle formulas. Well, we look forward to seeing you in class. Have a great night.